approval of the July 20th, 23, uh, 2023 minutes. I move to approve. Okay. So I've got a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion, any questions on those minutes? Okay. You want to call rolling on those? Anthony Jermina? Yes. Steve McLucky? Yes. Terry Kendall? Yes. Let's go, right? Yes. Those have been approved. And we've also got approval of the August 17th, 2023 meeting minutes. Audience participation for I move to approve those as well. Okay. Sure. All right. We got a motion to second. Any discussion on those? Okay. All roll, please. Anthony Jeremia? Yes. Steve McLucky? Yes. Jerry Kendall? Yes. <coughs> vote, right? Yes. Those have been approved. Uh, now we're down to reports, finance, and admin. We've got information here on July and August, so uh, I'll turn it over to you and let you dazzle us, and then we'll have questions. Yeah, I can dazzle you. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the interest of time, I was just going to review August, um, since it's cumulative, obviously. If you have questions on July, obviously um, I have reviewed those as well, but in honesty, the um, summation is not any different. Um, so for August, I'll do um, Tar and Light first. Um, obviously, we're only 16.67% through the year, second month of our fiscal year. Um, and so uh, as of then, the revenue is positive um, and doing better than budgeted. Um, expenses are just a little bit over where they should be percentage-wise for the year, so they're okay. Um, investment income, again, we budget very conservatively, so that is doing better than anticipated. Uh, miscellaneous revenue is over, that's probably the most outstanding thing on here, um, and that's related to storm recovery, about $44,700, and uh, independent school district fiber service is what's in there, and that's about 46300 That makes up the, the biggest amount. Um, water it looks good revenue-wise, um, over better than budgeted. Um, the only line item in expense that is a little out of line are the supplies line item. Uh, that is mainly because they have encumbered about one point, almost $1.6 million for inventory items, um, and that's showing up there already. That hasn't been necessarily spent, but has been encumbered. Um, same on interest and uh, miscellaneous revenue is just is over as well, but it's only $28,000. Um, and then uh, storm water, or wastewater, storm water, whatever you want to call it. Um, revenue looks good, expenses look great, and um, the same on investment income. So really, nothing, nothing too out of line or out of what we would expect to see this time of year. Um, I don't know. Do you have any questions? Any questions on the financial reports? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, if the Minister of Services, nothing. Okay. Uh, from IPL, uh, update on the two studies. I, I had asked that, I think, at the last, for the last meeting. I was just curious, kind of where we're at. <clears throat> we have received, we have received the uh, scope of services and the cost estimate from both of the uh, firms, uh, the, the cost benefit analysis, which will be performed by, assuming it's approved by council, uh, the, that study will be, proposed, or be performed by DKMT. Uh, they've uh, done some work for us in the past and we're, uh, we're all suitably impressed, so we're glad to be uh, working with them again. And uh, they've got a very thorough uh, proposal lined out uh, some of the highlights, um, they would include a, a financial, they would do a financial review looking at, at current capital and, and, and budgets, uh, historical uh, 
information. Uh, part of that is in order to get a feel for what potential sales price or what value the, the utility would have, they would do a, a review of what the current assets and such are. Um, they would look at the, all the different contractual issues, power purchase agreements, contracts for capacity and energy, uh, any agreements or obligations that we have under NERC and, and SPP, uh, environmental compliance uh, impact, uh, any any lingering expenses that, that the city would have to maintain for like the ash pond closures, um, as well as a listing of services that IPL provides the city outside of electrical system operations, such as street lights, fiber optic network maintenance, fleet services, web cameras, technical support, other services. Um, one of the things that they included in this is an assessment of what are all the ways that IPL contributes to the city and what will be the impact if you sell this, if you sell the, the utility, will that be continued by the new owner or would that be a, a loss that the city would have to make up? Uh, so the impact and cost of um, various project management, capital budgeting, technology services, um, some of the back office functions, HR, finance, IT, contracting, procurement, uh, communications, all of those that, that um, IPL helps to support, those will have to be supported without IPL in the event of a sale. So they would look at, at what that is, um, do an asset valuation, um, and then come up with a, a kind of a, a bottom line, here's, here's what you could expect in the event of a sale. Um, one of the things that they did uh, indicate was they would recommend that uh, that some of this be done under executive session, attorney-client privilege type of arrangement because you don't want to disclose what your bottom line is so that uh, any potential bidders already know, you know okay, you said, you said that it's worth 300 million, here's our offer, guess what it is. Um, so they don't want to, they wouldn't want to disclose any of that without uh, the city's permission. Um, the cost of that study uh, is uh, $218,923. Say that again. $218,923. And they've got it broken down by task, uh, what all, how many hours they expect to expend. And that also includes supporting uh, public presentations, uh, public dialogue, um, and that's all included in, in that price there. But really, the, the whole purpose of that study is really just to take a look at the utilities as it is today and as it exists. Because no decision's been made yet on if we're selling, if we're, what we're going to do. This was just under the direction of the council, right? This, this was one of the things that the council requested is an evaluation of a sale. I mean, we've talked about several things. Um, the contracts with uh, Omaha Public Power, the contract with NPUA for IOTAN. The contract with um, MC Power for the solar solar farm. All of those contracts are with City of Independence, not IPL. So if you sold IPL, the city still has those contracts. What are they going to do with them? Right. Uh, obviously, the city couldn't. The city couldn't continue a relationship with OPPD at uh, about 1.5 to 2 million dollars per month. Um, there wouldn't be any purpose in it. Um, and what would it take to end those contracts? Because the, the contract language gives, uh, for IATAN, it gives MPUA the sole right to terminate, and for OPPD, it gives them the sole right to terminate. What would it cost to terminate those contracts? Yeah, so it's not just as easy as selling it and walking away. There Correct. There's a lot of technicals out there. That be well, for example, on the OPPD contract, um, that contract has a lot of moving parts. There's ongoing operational expenses, there's capital expenses, there's a capital fund for the eventual uh, closure and demolition of the plant. But a big chunk of it is um, their debt service. As part of that contract for receiving their power, we agreed to pay a portion of their debt service. And that is about, I, I did the math, uh, based on the table that's in the contract, that's about $113 million remaining on that agreement. Um, now, don't know what OPPD would 
you know, what they would choose to exercise and all of that. But uh, that's one of the things that, that DKMT would get into those contracts and examine to see what would be that impact of, of terminating those contracts. Um, they also would look at uh, any impact of uh, loggers and staywell. Uh, loggers and staywell are funded based on investments, based on contributions, uh, and volume is a big piece of that. Well, if you eliminate you know, 175 employees from that pool, does that change the math? Uh, so DKMT would look into that. They won't. The idea is to give the city an eyes wide open look that here's what you may get from a sale, and then here's what it's going to cost you uh, in the event of a sale. So that all of that information is on the table uh, so that uh, you all can make the best recommendation and the council can make the best decision. Uh, and right now, the proposal that was put forward by council was to actually put this to the public vote. So we want to make sure the public is fully apprised of what it means. Um, uh, including any like potential uh, changes in level of service that a, a uh, that a private utility would provide compared to what we currently serve, uh, and any anticipated rate changes based on um, their investment and purchasing. Utility. What's the time frame on there? Just like it'll take them six months, nine months. They're looking at like a six month target to to get the all the data collected and analyzed. Um, I know the the council's the council's um, proposal was that it be anywhere from this November to November of twenty five. So um, you know, we have we have a lot of time in there to work with, but we wouldn't we wouldn't drag it out unnecessarily. And the other contract? The other contract is with Sawbell and Associates. It's for a long term strategic plan, uh, looking at um, what would it take in the event if for continued ownership and operation, what does that look like for the city? Um, a 20 year revenue requirement projection, an all source long range capital and operating and maintenance investment strategy, including generation, capacity, transmission and distribution, uh, both maintenance and upgrades, technology solutions and implementation, customer service improvements. Um, all of that would be looked at, at to see what could the city expect uh, it won't be it won't be in, in excruciating detail because nobody's crystal ball is that good. But they what they'll they will also do a condition assessment, look at what things will reasonably have to be upgraded or replaced over a twenty year span. Um, as our various contracts expire, what types of things should the city look at to maintain our capacity and generation obligations at Southwest Power Pool, or are there other avenues that we should uh, should look into as, as well to, to meet those obligations. So all of that would be under a looking at like a 20 year a 20 year span to see what the, the impact of continued operation is. Same time frame, six months ish. I don't. That one I think we'll have to work with them. Um, I don't have a. I don't have a time frame on that one, but they were they were apprised of the same council goal uh, that you know anywhere from this November to two years from now. Right. Uh, but again, we will work. They've got it lined out. Different meetings that they would have with staff, city staff, IPL staff, uh, resources that they would uh, and documentation they would request, and we would certainly work with them expeditiously to, to move that right along. And the price tag on that one. Uh, is, is quoted at three hundred thousand dollars, not to exceed. And you're taking both of these to council Monday night. We have them on the agenda for, uh, or we're, we're putting submitting them for the agenda for next Monday night. Or no, no, I'm sorry. Monday night is the study session, which will allow them to ask any questions, uh, go through exactly what we're doing now, talk about what's included, what their plan of attack is. And, um, and then allow council to ask any, any questions or discussion about that. The first council meeting in November is when these would be on the agenda for uh, approving the purchase orders. All right. Good. Yeah, question. question. Oh, when these reports are done, will we get the reports or will we get uh, 
a summary of what they well and based on based on uh, DKMT's recommendation uh, that's something that we're going to have to discuss is how do we how much information can how much can we responsibly release publicly and how much do we need to keep uh, close um, and then whatever meetings we would need to have to, to, to do those uh, like in executive session uh, but certainly we will we will keep you apprised of the progress as we go I, personally I would like to see as much of what they wrote you know, what they found as possible instead of a summary by a third party and, and to be honest, open and honest with you, that is that was the objective of the council's original proposal: is that these are these are reports coming from outside vendors, not staff, not IPL, not you know anyone already associated with us or council, to get a truly independent right. voice. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Uh, the next one I'll turn over to Ms. Tyndall. I think it was your you had some questions about payment assistance programs. I did. Oh, Thank you. I forgot to mention too. Pull the mics over to your mouth. And talk if they're not, if they're not having trouble hearing. Help the meeting right over here. Thank you for your clarity uh, so far on that issue. Uh, this could be partially directed at municipal services because of the billing process, but um, with the very tiny increase in our electricity rates, are we uh, making people aware of aid that's available to them, uh, especially if somebody starts falling behind? Um, and what does that process look like? How many agencies or services do we work with for that kind of resource? Well, we have two programs, iShare and IRAP. Um, don't ask me to tell you what those both mean. I don't remember. But they're, they're both, that's two different programs that can provide assistance to our uh, our customers to pay their bills if they're in financial, have financial difficulty. Those are both administered for us by the Community Services League, so we direct people their way. Um, information on these programs is available in the, uh, the customer service portion of our website uh, and there is information that does go out uh, and when people are falling behind on their bills uh, we, we give them several notifications uh, before we show up to turn the power off or, or disconnect the water so uh, we're encouraging them through that time to come in and see us to you know if, if it's just a, a little bit of a problem maybe they can set up a payment arrangement and we work with them on that uh, if it's something where they're going to need assistance, we direct them to those community services and resources. Thank you. Anything new being added at this time? That's the two. That's the two programs that we have. Okay. And again, I will say one of one important <laughs> part is yeah. they need to come in and see us before we disconnect. And this is this is standard across utilities everywhere. We are more than happy to work with people to help them come up with a plan, to help them come up with a payment schedule in advance. Once it's disconnected, you have to pay the minimum balance in order to get reconnected. At, at, and the time for negotiation is over at that point. So don't wait till the last minute to get help. We actually do have a total of eight agencies that we can put them in contact with. And um, we're running hard copy lists for the people that come in and request that, and something that we can send out in PDF format as well um, when they do contact for actual assistance instead of just ranges. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on for IPL? Okay, anything else for us for new? No, that's no. it right now. All right, thank you. Uh, anything, Deputy City Manager, anything new? Um, if I can find it, I'm going to go through. Just some of the communications that we've been doing or we're planning to do as we uh, you know, remove this discount. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to make it's important that you're aware of what we've done so that what's happened in the back. And this um, is the 6%? Correct. Yeah, yeah we're removing that discount. Um, so for the last few months, we put articles in our you know, in our publication to make sure people are aware. 
um, that social media posts. You know, people people are dialed in there. Uh, we put a letter inside their bills in August. Um, then uh, we have a message on the bills in October about this. And then next month we'll have another message on the bills about this. And then we're going to probably do like a video next month as well to highlight the changes and talk about it. So we're really trying to, um, we, we've been proactive and we'll continue to you know, educate people and inform. So hopefully we don't have anybody that's you know, caught off guard or off, you know, on their heels about this. Because we use virtually every communication outlet and channel we had. The team has worked really hard on it. So when does the 6% go in effect? The, the change was in effect for October. However, it won't show up on their bills till November because October we're billing for September. Okay, very good, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, now we're down to board member comments. I have one. All right. Speaking of billing, um, my husband does the bill pay at our house, and he's an internet guy, so everything's been paperless and all that type of thing uh, for a long time. And then the new system started up, and he didn't really realize that there was going to be a changeover of the billing system. Uh, he has a high IQ, he's a web developer for decades, and he had a very hard time converting our old, you know, customer number, et cetera, into the new format and you know, moved our bank account number over and, and everything was, you know, by hand and so forth. Um, and so I thought it would be um, good to just include that comment that it was really long and arduous to get uh, the people who are entirely online converted over to the new building system. Um, I cannot imagine my parents attempting that. Uh, they're probably a paper type person anyway, but uh, some people who might be online might go delinquent because they had no idea they needed to enter all their information brand new into the new system and things like that. Um, so I think that's worth a look um, because he's really good at that stuff and it was really hard. Uh, customer number versus account number was not super clear. He needed an old bill to be sure of those potential numbers anyway, so it was a little challenging. So, just wanted to make that known. Otherwise, I really enjoyed the phone number. Okay, anything else? I got just one question. Just a really easy one. Um, was kind of curious this last outage that we had with the poll that got mm -hmm. uh, hit up here on working lines. When a when a truck or somebody demolishes a pole, knocks one over, does IPL get reimbursed for that? Like through their insurance, do they have to pay for it? Or? Uh, depending on the circumstances, we do work with our uh, risk management team uh, in any any type of accidents, whether whether it's an accident where we run into something, someone else's property, or somebody else's property runs into ours, we do work that out through our, our insurance carrier. So to be clear, we try to recover our full cost, right? right? Every time, no matter, you know, our, unfortunately our infrastructure is damaged, not infrequently. So we, we try to recover the full amount that uh, would be required to make that um, sometimes we're successful, sometimes we fall short. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, anything else? I'm going to just throw a note in here talking to Christina before the meeting. It looks like uh, new equipment's going to be installed in this room, the AV stuff. So, probably the last six weeks of the year, they're going to be in here. It's taken a while to get the equipment, but they're going to have it, get this thing fixed up. So, hopefully, by the start of the new year, we will be in good shape. I hope we won't have to be using hand signals. Small <laughs> that. Okay, uh, our next meeting is uh, November the 19th, uh, 2023, the week before Thanksgiving. I think I actually have the wrong date on there. I think okay. it's 16th. It's November 16th. We just changed it to the 16th. <laughs> 19th is Sunday. 
Oh, is it? It is upside down. Okay, it's the 16th. In this, in this room, it might last till the 19th. Right now, we're going to start it on the 16th. <laughs> he is speedy. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh, looking for a motion to adjourn? So moved. Got a so second. moved and a so second. Okay, all those in favor, aye. 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 Okay, meetings adjourned. Thank you.